Hey everybody, I know that you want to know about how to get the rest of the table to speak in character. So today on player base, IGR, I'm going to show you exactly how to get that going. Now, the first thing you might be wondering is, is he talking about the voice? Which is what Matt Colville calls it when people, you know, they put on a voice and that's their character. No, I'm not talking about the voice. But even if you're not a trained professional actor, you can speak in character metrics in distinct identifiable ways. For that, I'm gonna send you to this guy's channel, Improve Your Voice, and he's got a great video on that. You don't have to learn how to like speak in different accents or you know, do different tone shifts, just simple meter changes, which is great for that kind of thing. But that's not actually the issue. Because the issue that most people have when they're talking about how to speak in character that they don't know that they're talking about is that what you're asking people to do is something that is emotionally and psychically very dangerous or feels very dangerous to them. It's very risky because really what you're asking them to do is to take this character that they've made that is most likely an aspect of power fantasy of them connecting or attempting to connect with an aspect of themselves or the world that they don't feel they have agency in or haven't fully learned how to accept and grasp and explore it at a table, a social circumstance, full of people who maybe they don't necessarily know or trust very well. And so the issue here is not one of training or metrics really, but of safety, player safety and GM, DM safety. How do we go about this? And more importantly, what do I mean? In order for the character to be explored by the person who has attempted to engage with parts of themselves that are in their shadow, you need to act in a way that acknowledges the reality and the veracity of the character. So that doesn't necessarily mean that when that character acts, the people at the table make a space that's completely safe for him or her or them. No, you're not necessarily just only showering them with plus one swords and flowers and good sanity rolls. That's not how making it safe for the character really works. In fact, if anything, that might over-saccharinize it, you know, like when people in the, in the rest of the Rat Pack would go out of their way to make Sammy Davis Jr. feel comfortable, and it'd be like, would you guys quit being so nice to me? Very subtle dig at their reverse racism, but whatever. Anyhow, in order to make it safe for people to engage in the aspects of their shadow that they're exploring with the character, whether they know it or not, you need to interact with that character and that character's actions in a way that acknowledges and acts as if that character is real and the bounds of that character are real. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say the character is some type of angel creature. You have to play it, forgive the, the turn of phrase here, but it comes from vaudeville, you have to play it straight, which is to say, you need to engage with whatever the boundaries of that character's reality and social dynamics would be within the reality of the world that you're playing in. And as best as you can do, make them consistent. But also, and this is really important, you need to not break the fourth wall on that character's reality. That's really what makes it unsafe for people. The fourth wall needs to be maintained. What do I mean by that? Well, if you have a character at the table who is, say, some type of angel creature, fallen angel, uh, higher angel, whatever it may be, within the scope of that, and within the world that you're playing in, those angels are real and they have you know, social limitations, let's say fallen angels can't necessarily go into churches, then you have to act as if that is a known quantity and that the boundaries of that, say they try to enter a church, the cleric will stop them, or the cleric will go get holy water to spray upon them, or when they enter the church, it starts burning them, 
that kind of thing. What makes it not safe for that character isn't that the dangers in the world are confronting them and therefore the person who's playing that character is feeling those dangers. No, that actually allows them to get further into it. What makes it dangerous for them is if, say, there's someone else at the table who has a similar angel character or cleric character who is running a pyramid scheme and the whole nature of their character and idea is a fourth wall breaking meme joke that completely ruins the verisimilitude of the rest of it. Jokes in game are always funnier and whole table belly laughing than jokes that are breaking the fourth wall in my experience. I could be wrong on this, but you know, that's what I bring to the table, pun very much intended. Getting the characters to do something funny versus having you do something funny about the characters in the situation, having the characters, not the players, make jokes, having the humor come from that, is much more satisfying. And, and, and in character jokes, also really engage and make real and make safe for everybody at the table to explore their characters and their shadows safely. So in conclusion, just to wrap it up in a little 30 second section. If you want people to speak in character, whether it be from the I perspective or speaking in second person or simply describing what the character is doing and how they're relating to other people, which is perfectly fine. And you know, some people may have a real hard time coming up with dialogue or thinking in different meters off the top of their head, which is again fun. Simply saying, my character looks at this person in the scants and pushes the cleric to the side as they walk right in. That's also fine. They're still speaking in character. They're acting in their head as if that character is real. And then when the responses come, affecting them in a real way, that makes it safe for everyone else in the table to act as if that character and their own character and the world is real. And then funny hijinks ensue. And things that happen to the characters that are funny versus you making jokes about you playing, which is essentially what fourth wall breaking memes and puns are. Oh man, so much more satisfying in the stomach and the abdomen and all that when you laugh. You know what I mean? Anyway, hope that was helpful. And uh, please, you know, for your own edification, go listen to improve your voice. The link to that particular video is down at the bottom there. That guy's got a great channel on all that kind of stuff, and that may help, but the actual real meat of the issue is one of exploration of player safety of their psyche. So that's what I gave you. Anyway, thank you very much for being here. My name is GR, and this is Player Base. See ya. Dun, 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 dun.